I absolutely love transfer deadline day, especially when Everton are going to sign someone. At least I think they are. I mean, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm just I just emailing that and scheduling stuff. While Rob's at a wedding working really hard. I'm doing all the office work. It's transfer deadline day, which means only one thing. Sky Sports News will be on the TV all day. There's 14 hours remaining, and to be honest, I'm expecting Everton to do a couple of deals. I reckon we'll bring in another two players. Be nice to bring in another three, four, five, six, seven, and another team. But I'll be happy with two players. And we've got some meetings this morning as well, so best turn that down a bit. Right, we're on the vlog as well. So, oh, 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 yeah, you're on the vlog. We finally got the chamber on the vlog. <laughs> Tell us who you are and what you do. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're here, because we ain't got a clue who they are or what they do either. So, first meeting of the day, done. It was with Doncaster Chamber, it was with Vicky and Laura, two people that we know really, really well. I've actually known and worked with Laura several times over the last God knows how many years, to be fair. They basically just come to check on us because we're members and we're silver members of the Doncaster Chamber and just to let us know about what things that we can be doing, how we can utilise our membership better and all that type of stuff. And I have to say, there's a lot of things that I didn't know we could utilise that we will now be utilising. But between me and you, transfer deadline day is back on until actually our next meeting. I'm going to turn volume back up now. It feels like these two are staring at each other across the office having a beard off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, hey, do, I reckon your beard wins, you know. Ooh, I don't know. It's not, do you know, know why? Do you know why? I can back it up. I can back this up. I think your tash with a little, little flicky bit, off. it's a little bit yeah, different. Do that mine, actually. Oh, a little twist. See. Do a little twist in it all. Right, well, if it does and this, this works, like this is how I want to see you every day, because I have to look at you every day, so. Flip. Oh, hey, uh, oh, hey, uh. oh. Feet, that's that's better than mine. That is oh that's top tier that. You've got to go and film a wedding <laughs> looking like, like that. that does look right, you need to get some wax in. Yeah. To keep it that way. <laughs> I'll um I'll just stick to me patchy trying to grow a beard like a teenager. <laughs> I just realised I don't want this to happen again where I've got Josh in the office. We're having an incredible conversation and I don't capture any of it. So I'm just going to sit you down there and pretend that you're not there really just while we have a chat um, and you can be a fly on the wall today. But yeah, I have to be careful now that's going to my vlogger voice. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be normal. It's like presenter voice. It's like we, me and my mate do some acting. We do some film. We're doing a horror film at the minute. Yeah. And um, we do a horror film every year because he likes to get into fictional filmmaking. Right. Okay. Um, and so I do some, I do the acting in that one. So you're an actor as well. Well, this is it. You like you say with the idea of scripted versus non-scripted. I'd love to do some acting, but I just don't like the script bit. Oh, honestly, we'll get you in. We'll get you in, and we'll just be like, all right, you just go in and be a be a victim. Play dead. Play dead. I'm in the film. David, dead guy. Yeah. But it's like we there's such a I don't want to say art. It sounds like I'm bigging myself up, but. Big yourself up. Oh, Vlogs on. Hey, there's there's an almost an art form to presenting, isn't there? Yeah. Like presenting, you've got it. You're not talking to a screen or whatever. You're talking to the people behind yes, it. Yes, yes. I'm glad you've said that. Yeah. That's exactly how I explain it to people that yeah. are trying to. Fit. I'm like, you're not talking. They're like, how do you sit and talk to a piece of equipment? I'm like, I don't even see the piece of equipment. Yeah. I'm just talking to you. Yeah, exactly. And that's why when I think we're presenting, I'm like. It's so it's so difficult for some people. I get that some people just don't love it, like don't like it. Yeah. But I love this idea of I'm telling someone a story. Like I'm just going and I'm like, oh, you, you've got to listen to me now. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you're kind of trapped here. <laughs> but but I got into filmmaking myself when I were about I'm not even kidding about I think I must have been ten. Yeah. Me and my mate, my mate Nathan, who does some you still do YouTube videos himself. We got the old, we got my old proper old MacBook that I had at the time with the webcam on it. Yeah. Put it on our wheelie bin, and we made this video about us doing like this dance competition. And <laughs> we were just like, yeah, we burnt onto CDs and everything. We called it like Oogie Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> and ever since then, I'm like, nah, I love it, mate. I love being yeah. in front of a camera. Is that why you're going to see? I'm, I'm slightly different because a few people that I speak to, especially when, because it's like a creative industry, people are like, oh, I knew I was creative from being four years old and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, no, not really at yeah. all for me. Yeah. I didn't even, um, so me and my wife, Dinner uh, met uh, about 11 years ago. 
and I think for the first two years or so, I think we started off with like Facebook, but yeah. then for about two or three years of being together, we never had social media and stuff. We weren't bothered about it at all. So even as as far as maybe nine years ago, I didn't even have social media. Wow. And then I I got to about thirty. I'm thirty six now. I got to about thirty and some circumstances happened at home where I became the stay at home parent and then yeah. I went to work and I was like, Oh, I've done like a bit of cooking, cleaning, looking after the kid and at the time the kids were small so they didn't need too much looking after really. Yeah. Um and I was like, oh, I need something else to do. So I started a blog about being a dad at home because awesome. back then no one really did it. So and it, after writing for my own website for a bit and then figuring out that I could turn that into an income, um, one of my girls was actually about 10 at the time, 10 or 11. She said, oh, no one reads blogs. Like, why don't you do it as a video instead? And I was like, I can't be on camera because of my, my Yorkshire accent makes me sound thick. And I was like, I don't want to come across thick because of my accent when I know I'm not really thick. Yeah. But I sound it. Yeah. And so I was a bit worried about that. But then I thought, do you know what? I also have the ability to not give a shit about what people think. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, let's use that. Let's lean into yeah. that. Like, let's try and see what happens. And it's weird actually because we mentioned Wentworth Gardens yeah. earlier. Wentworth Garden Centre were one of the first vlogs where I actually went out and vlogged a day out, a day in the line. No way! Yeah, we, and Elsica, where I know you filmed as well. We went there and did a vlog there. Oh, and then wow. we just got into vlogging and doing vlogs. So it, for me, getting into filmmaking and being creative and stuff weren't even a thing until I was about, 30, about six years ago. And then from then to where I am now, I'm just putting it down to maybe there's just some sort of natural ability to not care which yeah. means that then i'm also quite good in front of the camera yeah oh yeah i think honestly this sounds almost like i'm brown nosy because you're right in front of me <laughs> but it's quite inspiring to know that you can get to where you are you know like that agency you know having clients making videos presenting vlogs and everything yeah we are having a fucking clue <laughs> and that's it and also like i'm not calling you all don't worry but and, like at 30 like then you're finding your stride and then finding it it's yeah. like so many people think oh i don't know what i want to be when i'm older like 16 or whatever and yeah. you think yeah, you've, you've got, you have got the rest of your life already. Yeah, yeah right? well, yeah. I've got kids now that are 18, 17, 9 and 3. Oh, wow. But my 18 and 17-year-olds, one of them knows what they want to do and they're off to uni and doing all that. The other one um, doesn't necessarily know what she wants to do. And I've just basically said, um, try as many things as humanly yeah. possible. And at some point, you might find something that sticks. Yeah. I mean, it's been to my detriment right now because this is an exclusive for the vlog as well. Abby joined us a few months ago, oh, right. started an apprenticeship in digital marketing and all the rest of it. Yeah. And then after a few months, she was kind of like, I don't think this is the thing that I really want to do. Yeah. So we were like, so from a business point of view, I was like, ah, oh, shit, that's a bit of a kicking balls. But then from a parent point of view, yeah. I was very much... I have literally taught you that at this age is that is the time to yeah. start, stop, start, stop, and try things because you don't really want to be doing that when you're in your thirties, especially if you've got family. Yeah. But like you were saying there, I didn't have any idea this world existed till I was about thirty, maybe twenty nine, thirty, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm in it. Yeah, you're like you've nosed like, yeah, like I've nose dived into I mean, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it feels like we're nose diving some weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. It's like that's worth it. It's like when I went. Um, it's like when I like left full time employment to go freelance, people are like, You sure you're gonna be able to do it? I'm like, Well yeah, otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna be on streets. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. there's such a sink or swim mentality. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes some people are scared of that and sometimes people yeah, you know, don't want that and that's fine. But you wanna be comfortable, don't you? That's it, yeah. And it's like working for yourself is far from comfortable. Oh yeah. 100%. Like every month I'm like, Oh shit, have we actually got enough money? Okay, so it's got to ten to one. Meeting's done. I feel like I've done a full wait. I feel like I've done a full day. Meeting's done, which means now it's just an afternoon of ticking task after task after task off my task list, whilst also watching deadline day. Come on, Everton, sign someone. I absolutely love transfer deadline day, especially when Everton are going to sign someone. At least I think they are. I mean, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just emailing that and scheduling stuff. While Rob's at a wedding, working really hard. I'm doing all the office work. On a serious note, though, what I have done is I know that I'm off tomorrow, and then it's the weekend as well. So I'm going to try and have a couple of days not looking and thinking about work. 
Is it going to happen? I'm not sure, but I definitely want tomorrow off because I'm spending the day with my lad and it's just a dad and son day and I don't want to be thinking about work. So I've just scheduled a load of stuff that I know that needs to go out over the next couple of days. I've tried to clear my inbox, but I've still got one or two in there. And then I'm just planning what I might be able to get done later on in the weekend and then what I need to get done for next week. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay on top of like organising stuff in terms of like digitally. And the car fiasco is still going on. So my car's still at the garage today. It is road legal, MOT passed and everything, but there's still a tire that needs changing and swapping for a tire that was changed and swapped, but not changed and swapped to the tire that, some stuff's still going on with it. So basically I'm just staying in the office until they call and then I can go and pick my car up and then I'll go home. Anyway, back to enjoying transfer debt. I mean, back to like doing worky stuff. Do you want to see more of the conversations such as the one that I had with Josh? We've got some big ideas together. We've got a really big project that we really want to work on together. I don't know how many times I'm going to say really, but, it, but, but I really want to like do stuff. So you'll see more of Josh at some point over the next couple of months, I'd suggest. And definitely more of him coming into next year because we've got some plans for some really, 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 I'm just going to keep saying really, cool projects. Do they involve running around Doncaster with cameras? Yeah. Do they involve podcast yeah do they involve just creating some really cool stuff just because yeah that as well anyway no one else is here and we ain't got no more clips to use i don't think so end of vlog i'm gonna party until i drop when i begin i don't know how to stop i can party on till the morning comes till the sun goes up we don't stop no